All right, I'm going to give you guys a treat here. I'm uh, moving away from timing for a while because I'm just really sick of it. And I've moved on to uh, trying to clean out the high-speed cruise, right? Uh, how to get that AFR to where I want it. So let me show you what I'm going to do or what I'm doing. Okay. This is a transfer slot restrictor. This information's all over the place. You can find this stuff. This is your idle feed hole. Either one of these outside guys. Uh, and this is your transfer slot restrictor. Now these carburetors don't come with these. As you can see, I've, I've threaded that myself. So I can get a little better. Uh, that's drilled out and threaded for, I think it's a 532nd drill, and then you tap it with a 1032. And that's a 1032 uh, brass set screw. Now they look like this when you buy them from McMaster Car. These are 3 eighths of an inch long, I think. And that's as short as I can get them. So what you gotta do is cut these off. Now I, this is how I make mine. I stick the appropriate Allen wrench in there and I keep grinding on them with an air grinder and a 90 degree set like this. I got this little air compressor going and I got that fan blowing on it because it runs a lot. But make sure you get this time to cool off while you're doing it. But a good fan blowing on it will cool it pretty quick. Uh, I'm sure there's better ways to do this. I used to use a Dremel tool with a slicer and cut a bunch of it off and then grind it. But I ran out of slicer wheels, so I've had to just grind a quarter inch off these things. And it burns your finger, so I got some water here to dip it in as it gets hot, and I hold it with this. you got to make sure you don't lose it because it'll fling it across the room. Now to keep my stuff clean i just put this towel over my stuff and do my work right here the the particles that come off it are so fine that you probably would never worry about hurting anything i mean you might be able to see some they're just tiny little shiny brass particles they're so small i mean you could probably sprinkle them in the carb and it wouldn't hurt anything but still it's better to keep it clean if i had more room in my shop i'd probably put this somewhere else and do my grinding but as long as you cover it up and then dust off your stuff i've never had a problem people get just a wee bit too anal here's more uh proof that these blue gaskets are really great and the phenolic spacer works wonderfully i talked about that before see it over there the phenolic spacer allows me to use these gaskets over and over and over again so anyway i referred back to my notes and i totally forgot that i put transfer slot restrictors in this you'll see it you'll see them right here and I had to whittle them down to 69 thousandths in the primaries and the secondaries <clears throat> so right now I'm just doing a set for the primary side even though I took them both apart really because I'm lazy and I saw that I don't know if you'll be able to see this is before the secondaries even open on this card I mean I can adjust it with the linkage here make them open a little bit but this is a thousand hp so you get quite a bit of driving off just the front and at part throttle i'm definitely not even cracking in the back so i don't think it's a big deal if my uh, i'm sorry about my stuffy nose and i got a cold i caught it for my kids so uh i'm doing a lot of driving just on these front two barrels and cut and driving around the city where my my stuff drops down to 12 to 1 and stuff is uh i gotta take care of my nose here <clears throat> that's where i'm getting into the the idle circuit and the transfer slot circuit driving around a lot because this will idle at like 14 to 1 and then when you start moving on it backing up moving around it drops into like 12 to 1 region and it doesn't need to be that thick or that rich so i'm breaking these down to uh 65 thousandths and seeing how good that works so that's about 10 percent i did the i did the math somewhere 
somewhere I did the math in it, uh, the area of a circle and all that jazz. So if you see this paperwork, uh, every time I dropped it, I believe, uh, where am I? Okay. Well, it was 72. Before that, I think I had 75. I won about three or four thousandths every step. Here they are, actually. I saved them. What's this guy? Well, that's 69. I have some extras of there. 72 and 76. So I dropped like four, four, three thousandths a couple times. And that's roughly probably 12 to 10% as you step down. Because as you get smaller in a circle, the it's it's the area drops quicker, quicker, quicker. As you go up, it gets larger, 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 faster. So that's uh, math and science and stuff. But uh, I figure I'm going to try 65 and see if it curbs that some, which it should. I mean, I, it, there should be no problem. It, 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 well, carburetors aren't as hard as people think. You you got. You know where it works. Closed idle circuit. Cracking it, idle transition, mostly transition, and then right into uh, main jet and transition, and then fades off into main jet. And then once it really drops vacuum, then it's uh, power valve and main jet. It's not that difficult if you have an air fuel ratio gauge. I suggest everybody has one when they start doing this. And then shit will start being logical to you. You'll start being able to figure out where you are and what's happening the thing is with bigger engines you'll be cruising down the highway just idle and transition for the most part you won't even get into the mains very often the bigger the engine is the more power it makes the larger carb it can use you really don't break into the main jets very often uh, because this under under power it stays right around the in the 12 ishes and then it, it it dips a little more when the power valve opens. Uh, I, I should have some data logger stuff, to, but I'm not going to do all that. But it's pretty close now. It's just that it's just that uh, city cruising and off a stop sign to highway is too rich. Main jet's good because you're making power up in there, and you want it richer to keep the. It's kind of a weird setup there when you get into your main jets and then your power valve setup and you actually you're you're in power now because it's kind of a double-edged sword. You need it rich to cool the cylinder, <clears throat> but also the richer it gets if your timing is off, the quicker it'll ignite. So you you have to strike a balance between a fast flame front from ignition and actually cooling the cylinder enough not to get pre-ignition. So, you know, you, there's two things going on there that you need to be cognizant of. Uh, because like we talked about over and over, when, you're, when you have high vacuum lean scenarios, which you can on a high-speed cruise, you can use a lot of timing because it takes longer for that thin mixture to burn. The lean mixture takes a long time for that all to burn. So it's theoretical that you could have, if it was too rich and too much timing, it would spark knock. If, you know, if you get what I'm saying. Now we're back into timing again when I wanted to talk about carbs. What carbs. Anyway, so once I get this guy down to the thickness I want, which it's getting really close, it might be a thread long. Uh, then I'll take this right now. This is a 64 and a half thousandths. Uh, in the drill, I have a, a, a like a little bit smaller one. It's like a 64.0 instead of a 64.5. And all I do once I get them the length I want is stick them into this hole in the table that I have threaded. I just drilled a little hole and threaded it in there. Then I can just take that drill and easily punch down through it, take it out, clean up the hole, blow it all out nice and clean. Then you got a replaceable jet. If you're really brave when you're starting these projects, cut it down 25%. Make your hole 25% smaller because then you don't have to make another jet. If it's too small and the car doesn't like it, you can just pop these out and drill them 4,000th bigger, 3,000th bigger, put them back in. Still doesn't like it, drill them on another 2,000th, 3,000th, put them back in. Instead of going, well, we're going to punch it out to... 
70 thousandths. Oh, well, it needs a 65. Frig, now I gotta, now I gotta make a smaller one. Because you can't make them a whole smaller. I thought about that. I wondered if I could braise one and fill it and, or epoxy it and redrill it, but I don't know. I don't want to lose a piece of epoxy into the port, the hole, and make a problem there. So I figured I'd just make new ones. But yeah, this is one system I'd recommend making a big step and working up with drills to find the right, the right size so you don't have to keep doing it. Unless you want a bunch of spare parts hanging around that you could use on other stuff. But anyway, this video is 10 minutes long now, so... This is where I'm at, and uh, don't be afraid of carbs. Just read and learn. Later.